downstairs. It's good. It's good. <laughs> She's 50, so that was pretty cool. Oh my god. Yeah, she was the first person. Milk I Manor. Yeah. I told the restaurant it was her birthday too, so they brought her a, a cake and said happy 21st on it. Welcome back to This Week in Money and happy 420. Blaze it. So first off, we have an AI created collab between Drake and The Weeknd that I did not listen to because I refuse to listen to anything made by AI. What Good do you think for of you. it? Did you I listen admire to it? your principles. Mm. I listened to it, hated it. It was um, the beat it was over was kind of like a 12 year old learning the piano. Mm -hmm. And the lyrics were something about like, she's on my nerves, kick her to the curb. Classic. Very Drake. Cla yeah, right? Very like, Drake. Which find I don't, some less annoying women, my friend. I don't enjoy Drake, but I feel like of all artists to be able to replicate an AI, mm -hmm. his music is so soulless. Yeah. That. What do you think this means for the future of the music industry, though, Serena? Is AI created collabs? Are they going to take over the world? No more Drake? No more The Weeknd? I don't think so. Uh, maybe with somebody like Drake, but with someone, you know, who has heart. Vanessa Carlton. Left. Oh, Vanessa Carlton. I mean. For sure. I would... The Cranberries. Actually, yeah. Yeah, the cranberries are All right, you can taste music. Do you have to let it linger? Google CEO Sundar Pichai has warned Great pronunciation. society, all of society, mm -hmm. us included, to brace for the impact of AI. He said um, it's really going to accelerate. We should be concerned about safety. We should be concerned about the job market. Is it going to touch us? Um, maybe. I'm concerned about how it's going to affect the porn industry. Because pretty soon people are going to be jerking off to things that, you know, it's not even real, right? Um, well, personally, I love God, so I don't know anything about oh. that. But I will point out that even though the CEO of Google is saying this, Google is developing its own AI chatbot you think called, he's two -faced. called Bard. This is a very CEO thing to do, is mm -hmm. to be like, society, come on now, we got to be prepared for this mm -hmm. terrible thing. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, I'm developing the terrible yeah. thing. Yeah, uh -oh. and it's, and it's going to touch you. Whoops. Oops, sorry, I didn't know it was going to be this bad. What do you think it's going to do to the job market? Uh, I think it'll replace a lot of lower level jobs, but let's focus on lawyers. A lot of that is just copy. Uh, lawyers are lower level. Thank you. As one, yeah. I appreciate it. And I can say that legally speaking as a lawyer. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of just repetitive stuff of searching documents, previous case study crap that is going to be replaced with it. So I'm all, I'm all for it when it comes to lawyers. I think on the investment banking side, potentially at the junior analyst level, there's going to be uh, some commotion there with that. A lot of the shit you have to do is just go in these databases, pull stuff, spread comps, boring as hell. You ever, you ever hand spread a comp before? No, can't say I have. I was a big fan of hand spread comps. Sounds like a blast. Mm -hmm. um, but as for the future of AI, you know, we don't have a lot of information on what's going to happen, so I think we should consult some tarot cards. Okay. Think of AI. Think of the future think of AI and try to put that energy into it. Let's do this one. The queen, queen of, of wands. wands. This queen is well respected and appreciated by her people. She is socially aware, respectable, confident, and full of charisma. That doesn't sound like AI. <laughs> Next. This could be AI. That kind of speaks to okay. AI. That card appears when you are uninterested in any of the options presented to you. Wait a while longer for a new offer to be made. That's how I feel about AI and my hinge matches. I mean, Do same. We, you want to play 52 card pickup? I'm about to. Can you? <laughs> You're picking this those up. Damn it. Serena, how do we feel about 12 year olds being able to work in tobacco fields? Because that's what is going on in your home state of North Carolina. Under the Fair Labor Standards Act, children 12 and up can work in agriculture as long as it's outside of school hours. To be fair, I think this is actually. Um, going on in all of the United States, or not necessarily going on, but mm -hmm. I think the agricultural industry of the U.S. allows this. Am I surprised that it's happening in my home state of North Carolina? I sure am not, but there is a, a but cool you got irony a, you got a 12-year-old picking tobacco, a substance that he can't legally buy, and it's seeping into his skin in the fields of, where are you from in North Carolina? Um... Cary? Cary, North Carolina. That was actually going to be my guess. This is ironic because kids, 12-year-olds, come on, they can work 
in these fields, they can get nicotine sickness because it's seeping in through their skin, but they can't buy a pack of cigarettes. Let mm, kids smoke. Let kids smoke, exactly. What's the big deal? Yeah, not lung cancer, not a variety of other ailments. You know, let them smoke. Elon Musk. Oh, wow, he's in the news again. So this guy just loves attention. Elon Musk has launched a new AI company, X.AI. How many companies AI. is he gonna launch? That's named after his son, by the way. How many times are you gonna interrupt me? This is after he has called for a six month little probation on AI. Oh. So God knows what he's trying to do. He has opposed OpenAI, which he co-founded in 2015 and left in 2018. Interesting, makes you wonder about his motives. Or what is he gonna do with this? If he's so anti big AI projects, is there? What's all this then? You gotta support your local small AI. You know, everyone's always only focused on big AI, but it's putting all the small AI, the mom and pop AI, mom out of business, and pop, right? Chat the GPC. homegrown AI. I mean, if he's so anti all of these big AI projects, what is he gonna do with this? Is what I'm wondering, and what I would love to see. Well, he's actually going to be announcing that it's called Truth GBT or whatever, GPT, GPT, whatever those last three words are on Tucker Carlson, because that is where you go to announce the truth to America. He wants to find out the truth via AI. Correct. Correct. The truth about what? The mother of all his kids are. I don't know. That's the question. Mm -hmm. So Serena, last week Budweiser had a lot of controversy for a campaign centered around transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney, who I'm not sure who that is. But then this week they released a patriotic American themed ad in response to the backlash that they received. Wait, is Budweiser, do they own Bud Light? Budweiser does own Bud Light, yes. I thought they just had similar names, okay. But I did, okay, I watched the ad, mm -hmm. I took some notes on it, here's the ad. Um, a horse walks around, two guys shake hands, Okay. another two guys hang out with each other, and then the voiceover is, this is the story of the American spirit. Which is interesting because they also go on to say, brood for those who found opportunity in challenge and hope in tomorrow. And I think that their reaction to this was extremely cowardly. If you're gonna go and talk about hope in tomorrow and then totally not back your initial strategy, back down because certain types of people who are your customers don't like what you're trying to provide and show for, which is inclusivity and treating people like people, then I don't know, it doesn't seem all that hopeful to me. Also, how is it anti-American? To just have like a, a trans well, I, I think it's anti-American to hate groups of people. I think we prove that time and time in various civil rights movements. That's true. So I mean, if your entire perception of your country is like shattered because somebody is on the side of a beer can, mm -hmm. maybe reconsider. So Serena, one of the things we decided to do was to pick mm -hmm. articles for each other. And so I really wanted to get your opinion on one issue in particular. You know, the large banks, the biggest banks. They wrote off $3.4 billion in consumer discretionary loans, an increase of 74% year over year. What do we oh think about that? Oh my God, mm -hmm. how dare they? I know. Oh, you don't want them to write off the loans. Oh, no good for them. So... What is a consumer discretionary loan? It's like people who are not paying their credit cards back. Oh, me. <laughs> so, yeah, so you, you would be pro them writing them off. Good for them. Does that signal any trends of America's consumers to you? Are they taking out too much debt? Are prices at the grocery store going too high? Which, interestingly enough, over 50% of Americans use BNPL. You know what that means? Banks not paying, paying loans. loans. There you You're go. Lying. No, 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 no. Buy now, oh. pay later. Uh, <laughs> close. That was good, though. Buy Thank now, you. pay later. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so one fifth of people who do that have used it for groceries. What does that say about soaring prices and inflation? I mean, it says inflation. It's out that's, of control. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It says inflation. It mm -hmm. sure does. Um, it's crazy. You know, the cost of living is, it is going crazy. up. Mm -hmm. Wages aren't. It's yep. tough out here. It is tough out here. All right, I have a few stories for you. Okay. Here's something I think you'll like and know nothing about. 
Olivia Wilde has been spotted with Jason Sudeikis after claiming that he does not pay child support. Are you familiar with the, the tragic tale of Olivia Wilde I'm, and Jason I'm Sudeikis? I'm familiar with being accused of not making child support payments, which I do, but I don't know who these two individuals are. All right, Olivia Wilde, she um, directed Don't Worry Darling, terrible movie. Don't know what that is. Loved every second of it. Um, Jason Sudeikis, hot, former SNL star, used to- Oh, I think or, I've or, heard of him. Yeah, Ted Lasso, that's who he is. So, I've Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis, they have kids together. I okay. think, I don't know if they were ever married, I think they were engaged for like 10 years or something crazy. They- uh, uh, We knew that was Separated. He actually, I think, got her like uh, some sort of thing served to her on stage at an oh, event. Oh, okay. okay. One so, time I saw that happen in the lobby of Credit Suisse to a, a woman who was divorcing a managing director, which if you're gonna oh, serve someone at their place, or like, that's good. That's power good. Move. Uh -huh. Humiliate them in front of everyone. That's exactly. my girl. That's yeah. my girl. Girl um, boss. Girl boss. Okay. And so is then, this uh... And then Olivia Wilde goes on to date Harry Styles. Oh, okay, the musician, yep. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, and it's this whole thing, Jason Sudeikis was so heartbroken, mm. and then a few weeks ago, she said that he has not been paying child support, she has been paying 100% of their kids' uh, care expenses. Maybe because he's so heartbroken. Maybe. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. does have a significantly higher income because he's doing Ted Lasso, which is this big show, and she did Don't Worry Darling, which... No one's heard of that one. What do you think about this? If you were married to somebody who, or divorced or separated from somebody who wasn't paying child support, would you be hanging out with them? I would not be hanging out with them, no. I'm, I'm more, I move on, though, you know, from people. Like, you can't, you can't backtrack, right? Onwards and upwards is how I view it. So, look, I think this is crazy what's going on with... Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis. But look, it's uh, the game of life, as Michelle Branch once said. All right, next one. Love this one. Influencer Lauren Gray has gone on TikTok and mm. claimed that a lot of her fellow influencers are faking going to Coachella. Ooh. That's right. Ooh. They're booking Airbnbs out in the desert near okay. where the music festival is, and then um, they're just putting on their little outfits and making a get ready with me video. Mm. And I kind of like that. Taking I kind of like that actually. And going home. Yeah, I mean, honestly going to Coachella seems like tor actually Burning Man would be torture to me. That's true. But I kind of like this move. I think it's economical. Uh, who wants to go, you know, with your hydration flask, dance to like techno or whatever in the middle of a desert? I mean, none of the people who are like going to Coachella mm -hmm. can like handle going to Coachella. My friends are I'm always like- I'm a fake like, that I went to Coachella. Oh my God, we were in the desert mm -hmm. and there was so much sand. And it's like, yeah, that's the desert. But like they don't, they're influencers. They yeah. don't know these things. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. I'm going to, after this, I'm going to make an Instagram story of me at Coachella and see what people say. If you could fake uh, being anywhere. Davos, the, the world I know. <laughs> that what? would be funny. Yeah, I'm going to fake that next year. I have no idea what that is. It's uh, a meeting of the global elites. It's kind of like Coachella for finance, basically. Fun. Mm -hmm. With that being said. Thank you for watching. And come back uh, next week. Come back next week for next week in money. There we go. Boom. That was good for very little preparation.